This video is for you if you're struggling to find a job in the tech industry. For context, I've been working in the tech industry for over 15 years. I've had over nine different tech jobs and I made over $275,000 per year in tech. And I'm still being contacted by recruiters to this day who are looking to hire me for my skills that I have. Not only that, but I've helped hundreds of other people land their first tech job. So it's fair to say that I know a thing or two about how to help you get a job in this industry. And I wanted to make this video because because I get hundreds of DMs a day from people who watch me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, watch all of my content all over the place. And people also come up to me in person telling me that they're struggling to find a job in tech right now. I can only help so much through video, but sometimes you just have to get real and honest. So here's a reality check for you to hopefully inspire you and help you land your dream tech job. The first thing that you need to understand is that you're gonna have to put in more work than what you actually think is required. A lot of people want to get into the tech industry and they think it's going to be a cakewalk to where the job is just going to magically fall out of the sky right into their lap. But I'm here to tell you that is not the case. You're going to have to put in a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of effort if you want to land your dream tech job. If you've been reaching out to one person per week on LinkedIn to connect with or ask to have a coffee chat with, maybe you need to increase that to five people per day. And it might be time for you to do an audit on your resume and your LinkedIn to see if that's the reason why you aren't getting any callbacks from recruiters when you apply for jobs. If you aren't having any recruiters reach out to you on LinkedIn, sending you messages about potential job opportunities, then you know that your LinkedIn is a problem as well. So it's time for you to take a deep look at your resume and your LinkedIn and start making those changes so you can actually start making progress to land your next tech job. The tech industry is very competitive, so you have to go above and beyond to stand out in this industry and the way for you to stand out is by setting yourself apart by going further and doing things that other people don't want to do so reaching out to recruiters when it comes to networking going to in-person networking events going to virtual fairs and to reaching out in your network with people who can actually connect you with somebody who can help you land a job when you're on your job search you need to make sure that your resume is highly tailored for specific job titles I know some people like to tailor their resumes for each individual job, but nobody has time for that. You should be making at least two or three different resumes that are for job titles that you're applying to. So for example, if you're applying to cybersecurity analyst jobs, you should have a cybersecurity analyst resume that has a combination of keywords that you're seeing when you go out to apply for different jobs. And it might be a good idea for you to go out and get some harder certifications that most people don't have. So for example, when it comes to people trying to get into tech, a lot of people say, okay, you know, I'm just going to go get the Google IT certificate or the CompTIA A plus certification. And a lot of people have those certifications. So you aren't really standing out. If you're trying to get in a help desk, go get some more advanced certification like the CompTIA security plus, maybe get the Cisco CCNA certification. And then if you're looking to get into cybersecurity, there's different cybersecurity certs that you can get as well. Maybe you can look at certifications like the OSCP certification. If you're interested in being a penetration tester, or you can look at certifications like the CompTIA CYSA Plus, because that's gonna help you land a cybersecurity analyst role. But whatever you do, stay away from doing the bare minimum. The bare minimum is not what's gonna help you get a job in tech. You should also be continuously improving your skills. So while you're on your job search, go do different labs that you see on YouTube. You can look up, let's say, cybersecurity engineer labs, or system administration labs, or network engineer labs. You can also go to different places like tryhackme.com or let's defend or hack the box or even a cloud guru. There are so many different places that have hands on practice that you can do to help you improve your skill sets every single day while you're trying to get your next tech job. Hey, I know you're watching my video right now, but I want to invite you to a special opportunity to come to my five day six figure tech challenge. In this five day challenge, I am challenging you to to get to that next level inside of your career. If you do not know what strategy you're going to use to get into 
your first GovTech position or either get into a role that's going to sponsor you for a clearance or you're trying to move up in your career. By the end of these five days, you will know exactly what you're going to be doing to get into your first GovTech role. You will have your GovTech resume. You will also have my strategy that you can use to build wealth with your tech career. So if you're interested in working with me in my five day live challenge, you're going to spend two hours a day with me, right? So after 10 hours of these five days, you'll have everything that you need to actually start making progress. So I give you the worksheets that you need, spreadsheets that you need to start making progress in your GovTech career. So if you've been watching my videos, but you haven't actually been making any progress, now is the time to take the challenge. So sign up for my five day six figure GovTech challenge. The link is in the description below and I'll see you there. Second thing that you should do is not make any dumb mistakes. And I know that might sound harsh, but trust me, some people are doing things that you just absolutely do not want to do. Make sure that your social media is cleaned up. They're going to be looking at your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, any type of public social media that you have, they will be looking at these places. So make sure that it's clean. It doesn't have anything that's going to hurt your chances of getting a job. You also don't want to use any resume templates that you're getting on Canva. Those Canva resumes are extremely bad for you on your job search. You need to get rid of them immediately. When you're making your resume, it needs to be made in a Microsoft Word document and then export it to a PDF. If you're using Canva, those resumes cannot be searched when it comes to the ATS systems. The ATS is the applicant tracking system that companies use when they're trying to quickly look through your resume. So if you use a Canva resume template, you're not actually able to search those resumes. So you're submitting your resume and the system basically gets no results back. It can't see any of the keywords or any of the details on your resume. A good way to know if your resume is being read by the ATS system, when you go to apply to a job and it says, do you want to apply by uploading your resume? When you upload your resume, it should auto fill and auto populate all of your information for you. If your resume doesn't do that, then you know that it is not being read properly by the ATS. And since we're on the subject of resumes, please make sure you don't have a generic resume. I talked about this a little bit earlier about tailoring your resume and it is extremely important. Don't just use a generic resume for all of your job applications. Every single job is looking for a different set of skill sets. So if you're just using a broad resume across every single job title, you're gonna have a very hard time landing a job. Another mistake that I see a lot of people making is spending their time on what they think are certifications, but they're actually certificates. And what I mean by that is spending a lot of time on the Google certificates, spending a lot of time on Udemy certificates, Coursera certificates, those are not actual certifications. You wanna make sure that you're getting certifications that are industry recognized and industry respected. You also wanna make sure that these certifications are in high demand. So while you're on your job search, if you type in the name of that certificate that you're getting and search it on any of the job boards. If you don't see any jobs pop up, it's not a good certificate to get. Also, the same thing applies to real certifications as well. There are many different certifications out there, but if employers are not actually looking to hire people with those certifications, you might be wasting your time. Certifications that are highly respected in the industry are typically offered by either Microsoft, Amazon AWS, CompTIA, EC Council, a very small amount of EC Council certifications, also ISC Squared and ISACA. There are also other vendor specific certifications as well, such as Splunk, CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, VMware, and more. So you wanna make sure you're looking for certifications that companies are actually hiring people for. Another important thing to remember is to not listen to the people that are telling you that it's impossible to get into this industry or it's impossible for you to get a new job making more money in your tech career. There are so many jobs that are available, you just have to keep working towards applying for jobs and networking and meeting the right people every single day. I've even made a video telling you the best places to look 
for jobs where other people aren't even looking at. While you're on your job search journey, you cannot listen to negative opinions because it's just gonna slow you down, it's gonna make you doubt yourself and think that you're not gonna be able to reach your goals. As soon as you believe that it's not possible to do it, it's gonna become impossible because you're not gonna have that motivation to keep applying, to keep networking, to keep going to different hiring events, to keep working on your resume and to have the motivation to keep working on your technical skills so you can get paid more money on your next tech job. Most of the people that say that it's too hard to get a job in tech or to move up in your career in tech, they probably already gave up. So those aren't the type of people that you wanna listen to. You wanna surround yourself with people who are successful in the tech industry and surround yourself with people who are working towards the same goals as you. You can learn from individuals who have successfully entered the tech interview on my channel, I've interviewed over 50 people telling their story about how they got into tech and what they did to get there and the skills that you need to be able to get to where they are today. So you can't give up while you're on your job search because the benefits of landing your dream tech job is definitely worth the hassle. There's possibilities for you to be able to work remotely and overall you're able to work in an industry that's gonna make you happy long term. So even if you face rejections along the way while you're on your job search, I always say that you have to put up as many shots as possible. I know people don't wanna hear this, but applying to jobs is a numbers game. So if you aren't getting no's, you aren't trying, whenever you get those rejection emails, you can send them straight to your archive or you can try to ask for some feedback from the interviewer so you can improve on your next interview. You have to remember to celebrate the small wins throughout your tech journey because every win adds up and it gets you that much closer to reaching your goal. So if you're struggling to find a job in tech, hopefully this video was enough motivation to help you keep going and help you finally land your dream tech job. If you follow every single step in this video, I promise you, you will see results and you will reach your goal of landing your next tech job. But Doing this alone is easier said than done. When you do it alone, you don't have anybody there to help guide you along the way when you face roadblocks. You also don't have other people who have already been in your position that can help you stay motivated to keep going. And you don't have the right blueprint and roadmap to get to where you wanna be at. Or you can work with me and I'll help you find a role in tech specifically in the GovTech industry. If you pick the second option, then click the link in the description to learn more. Also, check out the video on the screen to learn more about how you can get through the GovTech hiring process fast. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.